Starting off today's show with a little bit of sad news. The Ravens announced yesterday that offensive line coach Joe D. Sanders passed away at the age of 70. Coach Joe D. was a fan favorite among colleagues, among players. It was really cool seeing uh, the love poured out to him on Twitter by beat writers, by really everybody in that building and surrounding that team. So our thoughts and our prayers go out to his family. And with that, we'll get into today's show. It's been a little while, but this guy's getting some action come tomorrow. It is time for the 53-man rosters to be here, which is just great news because that means we're just that much closer to the regular season starting. So who do I have as my five cut candidates for the Baltimore Ravens? We'll get into that in just a little bit. But before we do, let's take a look at the uh, AFC North sub battle standings. Not a lot of movement when you, cut, when you just look at the ranking aspect of it. But some movement with the subscribers. We're getting real close to the Bengals' breakdown. Just making that lead go up and up more on Browns Report as we should. And, guys, Steelers talk is close. We got a puncher's chance to get Steelers talk. It's, it is uh, August 26th. We got about five days left in this month. Can we do it by the end of the week? Can we lead the AFC North? Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and help us pass the Bengals and maybe even the Steelers. Let's get into our cut candidates. Starting out with number one, that is cornerback. Daryl Worley. Now, this is an interesting one because if there hadn't been such great cornerback play from other guys in this roster not expecting, I don't think he'd be a cut candidate. But if you just look at these last four seasons from Daryl, just not a lot for him to be like, okay, 100% keep this guy on the roster. 100% keep this guy on the team. And honestly, guys, at the end of the day, there's just too many young guys on this team that have a higher ceiling. There's too many young guys on this team that have a higher potential than Darren Worley does. Darren Worley has had a pretty good NFL career. It hasn't been a great one, but it's been one that, you know, a lot of people will wish they would have had. But just at the end of the day, you're, you're choosing people for the 53-man roster that are going to make a difference. And you're choosing people to put on this 53-man roster that you want around this team years to come, right? You want them around this team in the next two or three years. They might not have as much of an impact this year as Daryl Worley would have, but they're going to have a higher ceiling at the end of their career than Daryl Worley does now. Now, so he's my first cut candidate. But I want to know, know, you guys let me know down in the comment section, what percent chance would you give Daryl Worley to make this roster? I'm probably checking in at about, mm, I'd say 26. I don't know why not 25. I'm saying 26%. That's what I got. You guys let me know down in the comment section. Number two, we got quarterback Devin Leary. And guys, I don't mean to keep piling on Devin, but just when you look at his preseason stat line and when you look at what he's trotted out for every single one of these games where you're saying, okay, Devin, I don't know if he was a long shot, but hey, it's not a 100% guarantee you make this roster. Show us something, right? Show us something. And he just did it. 15 for 28, 95 yards in the entire preseason, didn't even get to 100 yards, threw two interceptions, 31.1% quarterback rating, just had an abysmal performance against the Packers on Saturday. Every single game, it seemed like he got worse, which is just not the trajectory you need to go when you're a guy that wants to make a roster. And again, guys, I don't want to keep piling on him, but he's just, he's not ready. He's not ready to make an NFL roster. And it's so interesting when you look at his college statistics because he's a guy that honestly regressed a ton from year 2021 to that 2023 season. Now, he was hurt in 2022, so I will add that in there. Those 1,265 yards, that's not what he did in an entire season. He was hurt. But 2021 had a fantastic season with NC State, 3,433 yards, 35 touchdowns, five interceptions only. And then his last season at Kentucky, under 3,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. And I always think that's something that you need to look at when you're picking quarterbacks in the draft is, okay, Are they stacking good season after good season after good season, or are they regressing? And I think the fact that he regressed a decent bit should have been a red flag to begin with. He is on my cut candidate list, and I think there's a uh, almost not a hundred percent chance that Devin Leary is getting cut. My next cut candidate. This one's tough, but you guys know who I'm rocking with. 
My next cut candidate's Deontay Hardy. And Deontay Hardy is a guy who seems to be only making this roster because of his returnability. But guys, he's had only 200 yards one time in his career. One time. Take a shot. Take a chance on Dayton Wade. I just like, I don't know if it's worth keeping a spot on this roster for a guy who's just solely going to be good in the return game. And when you look at his preseason stats, he wasn't that good in the return game. Deontay Hardy was. And you look at what Wade was able to do when, as an actual receiver. Seven receptions, 99 yards, 14.1 yards per catch, one touchdown. And he had the most receptions on this team, almost doubled the second person. And so I just think at the end of the day, Deontay Hardy, you're saying, oh, he's proven, right? He's been in the NFL a little while. But what has he proven? 200 yards? One time over 200 yards in his entire career? It's like, why are you saving a roster spot for a guy who's just, had, who's just been fine? Take a chance. I know Dayton Wade's an undrafted guy. I know that this is a shot in the dark, but what he's shown you in the preseason so far, I think has been good enough to earn him a roster spot. I hope that Dayton Wade makes a roster. But who do you have making a roster? Pick one. If you got Deontay Hardy, type DH in the comment section. If you got Dayton Wade, type DW in the comment section. And you guys let me know down below. You know. Oh, you know. I'm spamming those DWs. My keyboard might break. But that's what I'm spamming. Before we move on to our next cut candidate, I have to tell you about the sponsor of today's video. It's a new sponsor we got here on the channel, and that is Factor, everybody. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, include, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. And I got to talk for just a little bit about that roasted red pepper filet mignon. That is my absolute favorite thing that Factor's got on the menu. I like to think my dad makes a good steak until I had the roasted red pepper filet mignon. You might as well just cut out, what's, you know, Roos Chris, you don't need to go to him anymore. You got the red pepper filet mignon from Factor. It is in one word, delicious. So head over to factormeals.com slash ravenschat50 and use code ravenschat50 to get 50% off. That's code ravenschat50 at factormeals.com slash ravenschat50 to get 50% off. My next cut candidate, that's Sala Amave Laalu. Now, he's had a pretty good preseason, but I don't think that it's enough. And I know that offensive line depth is something to circle going into this year, but I just don't think he's a guy that they're, they're going to take a chance on. I don't think he's shown enough. And Jeff Zrebic with The Athletic had this quote. He says, things stand now, though it appears the Ravens are down to three guys for one or two spots. Samak, Manning, and Amave Lalu are legitimately on the bubble. And I've heard Salah's name more than Manning's. I think that this team is, is pretty happy with the way that Tayshaun Manning has been playing. And honestly, when you hear Salah's name a lot in the preseason in those games, that's not a good thing, right? It's a lot of how you're listening. Like when, you, when offensive linemen or cornerbacks get talked about a lot in broadcasts, it's usually not a good thing, right? Those are kind of the two positions that you want to fly under the radar. You don't want to be talked about a lot in a, in a broadcast. And you just kind of hear Salah's name a lot. He had a couple of bad penalties against the Packers. I just think Tayshaun Manning has a little bit more upside. And obviously it's something to, uh, to monitor with uh, Nick Samak going down with an injury. But at the end of the day, I think Salah is a guy who's on the chopping block. So who do you think gets cut out of those two? You think it's Salah or you think it's Tayshaun Manning? Type MA for Malia Salah, type TM for Tayshaun Manning. And we'll get going with our final cut candidate of this video, and that's Demarion Williams. And this pains me to say, guys, this does pain me to say, because I just talked the other day about how good Pepe Williams was playing these past couple preseason games, but honestly, the Packers game hurt him a lot. Jeff Zrebic of The Athletic had this to say, Williams really struggled in the preseason finale. Being on the field late in the fourth quarter probably isn't a good sign for his roster chances. And at the end of the day, guys, 
Our Darius Washington's more versatile. Jalen Armour Davis has been more impressive. And we know this team's not going to touch Brandon Stevens. They're not going to touch Marlon Humphrey. They're not going to touch Nate Wiggins. And they're not going to touch TJ Tampa. So who does that leave? Unfortunately, leaves Pepe Williams. And I talked about it last week. I was really happy with the way he was playing. Had heard good reports of the way that he was practicing. But I think that Packers game at the end of the day just hurt him a lot. And when you got guys like Washington who can play multiple positions, and you got a guy like Jalen Armour Davis who's just been playing – loads better than Pepe Williams has. I think those are two guys you keep over Pepe Williams any day of the week. So who do you guys think is a legitimate surprise cut candidate for the Ravens? Who is a guy that if he gets cut, you'll be like, whoa, I did not see that coming. I think it could be Deontay Hardy. I do. And I know I've been talking about Dayton Wade over Hardy for a long time, and I think a lot of you guys agree with me that you kind of want Dayton Wade to make this roster, but I do think that would be a surprise at the end of the day. Anyway, you guys let me know down in the comment section below, and as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's catch up to the Bengals. Let's pass them before the end of this month. Thanks so much for joining me. You guys have a great Monday.